All right, we got a 97 Accord here, a four-cylinder. This beast needs an oil change, so let's get it done. All right, first thing we want to do is make sure the engine's nice and warm so that oil will flow out, and it is. That This vehicle was just driven, so we're good to go there. So now let's get this thing in the air. All right, we're going to chalk both rear wheels so this vehicle doesn't go anywhere. All right, coming from the front of the vehicle, we're going to jack the vehicle up right here, right where this hook is, right where my finger's going through. We're going to put it right on the bottom right there, and we're going to jack it up. What we're not going to do, where is it? We're not going to jack it up using these plates right here. You'll bend them. In fact, I did a video on that. There, there's a little bit better shot from the side where we're going to put it right across right here. And then, once we get it in the air, we're going to put our jack stands right on this bracket right here. We're going to put one stand right here, one on the other side. We're not going to get under a vehicle without jack stands. And looking underneath, you can see right where I have the jack. push on it just for a second make sure that thing's not gonna fall and while we're right here let's see if we can loosen this thing up oh it's on there tight and we'll just grab a pair of channel locks there we go gently loosen it we'll take it off we'll just let it sit there that way the air can go in let that oil flow a little easier channel locks this is a big pair what is this? Model 442, just in case you're wondering. All right, I'm gonna need some kind of oil drain pan. This is the one I'm gonna use, in case you're curious. All right, here's the items we're gonna need. In this case, I need some coffee. And we'll need a Honda filter. I suppose you can use an aftermarket too, but I only use Hondas. This is what I use, 15400 PLM Alpha 01. They also make Alpha Zero Two, just two different manufacturers. Uh, this one's made by Filtech or Wix, and then the other one's made by Fram. You can just barely see it. It says Filtech right there. Um, the o Alpha O Two is made by Fram. I just prefer the Alpha O One, so this is all I buy. And we need a we need a washer for the drain plug. You can see I got one right there. I like to use a little bit longer three eighths inch ratchet with a seventeen millimeter six point socket, so we don't strip that out. This is a wrench for the filter. This is from Honda. There's the part number right there stamped into it. So you can read that at all. And then I use this longer um, 3 8 inch breaker bar from Harbor Freight. I put this on there and that gives me just enough clearance to get around the, the um, sh axle shaft down there to get the, to get the oil filter off. Works perfect. I don't need it as a breaker bar. I just need it, you know, so that I can use this long bar to get around everything works great and we're gonna wear some safety glasses too we don't want any oil splashing up into our eyes all right looking under the bottom of the car from our jack point right here there's the bolt there's your oil pan we're just gonna pop that 17 millimeter loose let it drain right into our pan we we'll just position it so we don't get oil everywhere all right as long as somebody didn't put it on here too tight, yeah, that was on there right where it should. I think because I'm the last one who did this oil change. And we'll just get, we want to get this bolt out of the way fast because it's going to be hot. Yep. Or we can just drop it in the pan like I did. Usually I can keep it in my hand, but of course I'm filming, so I dropped it. We'll just let that drain. Good idea to have plenty of little oil rags around. Mop up any little drips and spills. And we'll just fish our bolt with washer out and make sure we replace this. Alright, so if we look without putting the camera in the oil stream there, 
right up under there, there's our oil filter. And so what I like to do is I'm going to take my wrench that I showed, I'm going to put it up right around the axle, go right up here. And that the handle drops down here so I can just loosen it just like this. That's why I use that setup. See if I can film it. So there you go, and you can see how it sticks down right here. Not easy to film. So I'm just gonna loosen it up. And as soon as it starts to get loose, like now it's pretty loose, really loose. I'll get my tool out of the way. Now I can just reach up there and spin it off by hand. And then oil's gonna go everywhere, all over this crap. So we gotta watch out for hot oil. You can see oil goes everywhere. I'm trying to film and not get oil dumping all over me. We'll just let that flow a little bit. I'll loosen it slightly more. Let as much of that drip off as we can. And then I'll pull it out. And when I pull it out, it's still going to want to dump a bunch of oil everywhere. Just try not to get it all over my camera. And it's hot. This thing's warm. There's the rest of the oil. Yeah, that's warm. I'm not going to be holding on to that for very long. Now we'll just let that drain a little bit more and we'll clean it up and get it buttoned up. All right, one important thing we want to make sure, we want to make sure that rubber gasket, it's hard to see, but this rubber gasket that's right here is still on the oil filter. Usually they stay on these Honda oil filters, but you got to make sure. So this one's on there, so we're good. We don't want to double gasket. And so I'm just going to clean up right around where the oil filter, if you can barely see up in there, right, right there, the tip of my finger is. We're just going to clean up that mating surface and then everywhere the oil spilled like here and down here, I'm going to clean it all up and then we'll get the oil filter and the plug in. All right, if you want to know the part number for the 14 millimeter washer, there it is right there. You can see you can buy packs. You can see I got tons of them. You know, probably got 40 washers sitting right here. So in case you need the part number, there you go. All right. First thing we'll do, we'll get this bolt ready. Whoops. No. First thing we'll do is drop it on the ground. And then after that, we'll get it ready. You can see this one's still in good shape. Somebody has not dinged it all up by using the wrong size wrench or an impact or anything stupid like that. So we'll take our bolt and then our washer here, there's usually a slightly rounded side and then there's a perfectly machined flat side. That perfectly machined flat side is when we want to go against the drain pan. So we want it to go to the outside of this bolt like that. So the rounded side will go in like that. Now it's ready to go. Now we'll just get our uh, filter ready to go and being careful not to uh, mess this up Honda actually has a bulletin about poking your finger through there because then little pieces of plastic can get caught in the filter so you got to be careful taking it apart make sure there's no plastic in there and now we're going to take a little bit of oil and we're going to oil this ring right here and obviously this vehicle takes 5w30 so I, I don't get hung up too much on the quality of oil or who makes it as long as it's a good um, good company, 5W30. We want to look for this um, starburst symbol right here. And we want a service rating of SN. So as long as we have that API service rating of SN right there, we're good. So I'll just dip my finger in there. And we'll just get a nice 
coat of oil right on that ring. Now we're good to go. Now both of these are ready to go back on the car. Alright, now that it's down to a slow drip, it'll keep dripping forever like that. We'll go ahead and put our drain bolt back in with our washer. We'll get that. We're just gonna get it snug right now, and then we'll get it torqued down. So that's it. You see, I've just barely tightened it. That's all we need right now. Now we'll get the uh, oil filter in. And we're just gonna reach up through here. See if I can film it. And, what is it? and we're gonna spin it on. If I can do it with this camera right in front of me. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right, and you can see as I'm spinning it, right there it makes contact. And so now what we're supposed to do is we want to spin it seven eighths of a turn and you can see it tightens up really good right there. But I can't quite get really good leverage on there. But we want to make sure it turns seven eighths of a turn. So just a hair less than one turn after it touches. And because I can't quite get enough leverage on there, I'm going to put my wrench on there and just tighten it, I mean, just a hair over. Not much, but we don't want that to loosen up. And because I can't quite get a good grip on it, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so you can see I have it back on there. And I'm just, I mean, right there, I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on. I'm just going to go over just a hair like that. That's it. Now, we can wiggle this off. And now, now it's tight, but it's not so tight that we can't get it off next time. And if you want to use a torque wrench on that uh, oil filter, it's 16 foot-pounds. I don't. I just do it hand tight, and then if I can't reach up in there, I just use my wrench and just do a tiny bit more. No issues. All right, now we are going to torque the drain plug, and that's going to be 33. So we're going to put this down to 33 foot-pounds. And we'll go tighten that thing up. All right. If we did it right, we shouldn't have to tighten this very much. All right. We'll give this thing one last wipe down. Any residual oil. And then we'll go up top and get it filled. And if you watched my video on what to do with used oil filters, well, you'll know what to do with them, or at least what I do with them. All right, before we lower the vehicle, we'll double check, we'll make sure our bolt's tight, we'll make sure our oil filter's tight, make sure we didn't leave any tools or our drain pan or anything. Now we'll put the vehicle back down on the ground. And while we're thinking of it, we'll pull our wheel chocks. Alright, now let's look and see what engine we have to see what how much oil we need to put in there. And as you can see, well maybe you can't, this is an F22B1. So let's go look up the specs and see what we need for an F22B1. Okay, looking at our specs straight from Honda, this is an F22B1 engine. You can see, we're looking, because I'm in the U.S., I want to see how many U.S. quarts. Uh, so we got 4.2 U.S. quarts at oil change, 4.5 U.S. quarts at oil change, including filter, which is what we want, and then you got 5.9 uh, U.S. quarts after an engine overhaul. So in this case, we want 4.5 U.S. quarts. If we had an F22B2 engine, uh, we'd be looking oil change and filter, we'd be looking at 4.0 U.S. quarts. So you got to make sure you know which engine you have.
All right, and it's not a bad idea to check the oil before you drain it and see where your oil level is. In this case, I didn't do that, so I, didn't, I wasn't worried about it. But it's not a bad idea to check it first. And then, this is the oil that came out of the vehicle. Check and see how much you have, you know, as a, you know, and check it against how much should be in there. So in this case, it should be 4.5. This side right here is quartz. We should have 4.5 U.S. quartz. And right about here, actually just a hair below where I have this line, that's where the actual level is. So we're about three quarters of a quart low in this vehicle right now. Um, so we'll get it back to four and a half quarts like it should be. And what I like to do, I have another clean container of several different viscosities of oil. And I'll just dump a little bit out until I get the exact amount that's needed for this vehicle. And you can see we're right at 4.5 quarts. So now I can just dump the whole thing in without worrying about it. Alright, so now we can just take our cap off. Put our funnel in, and we'll dump all four and a half quarts in. Alright, we'll get our cap back on. settle for a second and now we'll uh, we'll just check it and make sure we got some on the dipstick before we start the vehicle it's always a good habit to get into that will prevent you starting it without oil you can see it's got plenty of oil so now we'll start it we're gonna start the vehicle and we're gonna let it run three minutes and then we're gonna shut it off for about five minutes and then recheck the level make sure it's good to go and then we're done We'll let it sit for about five minutes and then we'll do one last check of the oil level. All right, while we're waiting, this is a good time to check our fluid levels, check our power steering, brake fluid, our coolant, and we can check our transmission fluid really quick. This is just a quick and dirty test. If you've seen my transmission videos, you know exactly how you're supposed to test it. You got to wait. Uh, 60 to 90 seconds after the vehicle's been turned off and the vehicle needs to be fully warmed up. We're close to that, but we're not exact. But that's okay. You can see our fluid level looks good, so we're fine. All right, make sure our fluid level looks good. Been five minutes. And I don't know if you can tell, we're right at the top dot. So if you didn't know, it should be at the top dot right there. Let's see if I can get you a better shot. We got two dots there. We want to be at the top dot right here. And in between those dots is about one quart. So if you're at the bottom dot, you're down about a quart. But in this case, our fluid level looks good. We're good to go. And make sure you're properly disposing used engine oil. You don't want to dump that down a storm drain. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed how I changed the oil on these older records. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.